In this series, we'll be looking at some of the more unknown things of Vlau. First up, let's head over to Zangamarsh and look at Count Ungula. Count Ungula is a Netheray NPC who was much larger than all the other Netherays in the area, and it holds the distinction of being one of the few NPCs in the game that has quotation marks in its name. And if you tame this pet as a hunter, you're not actually allowed to put those quotation marks in its name if you try to rename it back to Count Ungula. If you kill this NPC, it will drop a quest item called Ungula's Mandibles, which will then give you some more information about the NPC from a quest giver. Essentially, this nether ray developed a taste for living flesh and started devouring other creatures, and could even be found fighting bog lords in the area. And it's even said that he was a legend by the Spore Lynx, though the quest giver is very confused about the mandibles you give to her and didn't actually think the nether ray existed, though she had heard about it. Now, this nether ray is pretty obvious reference to Count Dracula, a vampire from the 1897 gothic horror novel, Dracula, who is considered the model for modern vampires in works of fiction. So Count Ungula could be considered vampiric in nature, since it started eating other living creatures, and since it had a much bigger jawbone than normal, as a mandible is another word for the lower jaw. Although I'm not sure what Ungula is a reference to, and is most likely just its unique name. Now let's head over to the Lore Reader Tales, where we'll be going over the lore of some of the more unknown figures and minor characters from WoW's story. And today's story is about Brigitte Abendis. Abendis is one of the founding members of the Scarlet Crusade, and was even present when the Ashbringer was created in Old Hillsbred, as she helped to purify the crystal which became the core of the Ashbringer. When her father died in the Battle for Hearthglen, she was promoted to High General of the Scarlet Crusade after his death. In Wrath of the Lich King, during the Death Knight starting zone, players will run into Brigitte Bendis a handful of times, but never fight her. They just kind of spy on her leading the crusade, and are able to read through her journal. In her journal, she'll detail how she's been hearing whispers her whole life, and thinks that they come from the light, which makes her a very prolific light user and justifies her high spot in the crusade. As the Scarlet Crusade has always been an interesting piece of lore to me, since they are kind of the poster child for how the light in Warcraft is not always used by good people. The Scarlet Crusade are kind of crazy and fanatical, and kill normal, non-undead people all the time for either thinking they might be undead in disguise, or thinking they're not devoted enough to the light. The Death Knights never actually encounter her during the starting zone, and she eventually picks up and leaves and heads for Northrend in order to take the fight against the undead directly in the Lich King. And when she moves all of her men to Northrend, she renames them to the Scarlet Onslaught, and basically all of the Scarlet Onslaught members you meet in Northrend are working for Brigitte to Bendis. Although during some questing in the Dragonblight, you'll be tasked with stealing her diary which continues the journal from the Death Knight starting zone, where it goes on to say that due to the constant setbacks the Crusade face, she stopped hearing the light call to her as often, and basically had to rely on Admiral Baron Westwind, a former leader of the Scarlet Crusade who went missing in Northrend years prior during a failed campaign, and had miraculously found his way back to their camp. Although this ended up being a dreadlord in disguise, as you find out later on, the Scarlet Crusade has historically been ran by dreadlords, as they're kind of responsible for the crazy turn the Scarlet Crusade took in the first place. During one of the Horde quests in Dragonblight, players will be told to go and kill Brigitte Bendis and cut off her head. That way she can't be resurrected. And that's kind of where her story ends, just the objective of a quest chain in one of the leveling zones in Northrend. And she's not even the final part of that quest chain, as it's not finished until you fight Melganis in Northrend later on. Although, notable thing about Brigitte is that there was a popular Warcraft 3 custom campaign called Chasing the Dawn where you get to play as Brigitte Bendis in a Scarlet Crusade theme adventure which takes place after the Frozen Throne and goes all the way up to Wrath of the Lich King. And now for this next segment, let's go over a useful NPC. Located in the Tearsgar Sound, we have an NPC which might have been overlooked by a lot of players when leveling, or maybe just Horde players. If you're in the level ranges of 110 to 120, and head over to this cave located right here on the map, there is an NPC named Totes, 
who drops a free 28 slot bag if you kill him, which is an excellent mob to go on new characters so you don't have to waste a whole bunch of money on one of your bag slots, as generally, new players need to buy a lot of bags to both fill up their four extra bag slots that they carry around with them everywhere, and the multiple that are required in order to fill up your bank. Although, just a little warning, Horde players have a much harder time grabbing this one before 120, as all of the mobs in the area will be level 120, and only scale down if you're Alliance. And the bag drop is called Goat's Tote, which makes this whole little sequence an obvious reference to the slang term, Totes my goat which according to Urban Dictionary is just an awkward way to say totally when trying to act cool. And also, tote can be another word for a type of bag. So a goat dropping the tote is just Blizzard having fun with their naming conventions and references, which they do all the time as you'll probably find out as I make more of these videos. And to end off this episode of the Unknown Side of WoW, we'll be looking at secret or hidden places throughout the game, starting off with the hidden shipwreck in the Twisting Nether. Off the coast of the Nether Storm, there's a floating rock that has a shipwreck on it near a destroyed Alliance base. It's pretty obvious to assume that this was probably docked at a past port before the planet got destroyed by Ner'zhul in Warcraft 2, but unfortunately, whoever was on the boat probably got stranded 100 feet away from the city, so unless they had a way to fly, there wasn't really a way for them to get back to shore. There isn't very much lore or any quest associated to this place, and you have to fly out quite a bit in order to actually get to the boat, so most of the information I have is based on conjecture from context clues. There is nothing inside the boat, but there is an anchor hanging off the side of the giant floating rock, with a couple of other floating rocks flying by since it's located right above the twisty nether. Since there's no corpse or skeletons nearby, all of the previous occupants probably found a way to fly to the nearby city, maybe hitched a ride on one of the giant floating rocks nearby, or the more grim interpretation, where they probably just fell into the nether. Alright, and that's the video. I hope you enjoyed what should be the pilot episode of The Unknown Side of WoW. Taking a couple of unrelated things and putting them into one video with the common thing that they're all hidden parts of the game that are generally too small for their own videos, and don't really fit into the themes of a lot of the top 10s I make. So if you have any ideas or suggestions for this series, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.